Yo guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're not done already, subscribe to the cameras, boxing, like the video, and do all that amazing stuff. I'm saying do all that amazing stuff, but it hasn't been an amazing week. Listen, heavyweight scene is a very frustrating scene, man. Or oh, oh, bruv, like you got the WBA scheduled in a fight between Trevor Bryan and Jonathan Gatry, who is ranked 250 something place in the world. Do you know how mad that is? He's ranked for number 200 something place and versus Trevor Bryan who's been very inactive fighting for the WBA title. It's so crazy. And then you've got the AJ Fury scenario and the Dilly White malarkey. AJ, or apparently today, um, the team AJ are pushing for um, additional money for the step aside fee and negotiating what they can and have presenting that on the table for AJ I still don't think there's going to be a step aside I, I still just thinking about all the interviews I've seen AJ everything I've seen him do in his career all the decisions that he's been make making I can't see him taking the step aside it, it just don't make sense in my opinion it, it, because if you think about it he'll be seen as a complete ducker if he takes a step aside and you know, I can't really blame people who see him like that. If he does take this episode, I, I'll i say, you know what, it's a, it's a smart move, but a lot of people will be saying he ducked that fight. And if he wants to be seen as a throwback fighter, that's kind of like a no-no. Again, some people say he needs to you know, give him time to work if he's a new trader, but at the same time, wouldn't that not cause problems for the rest of the division? You've got Diddy White, who... Apparently today, the first bit has been delayed until Friday. To be fair, that's, that's a little bit on the positive side because the live show on Friday, the, the fighting talk show, will be held at 9pm. So I hopefully I come to you and bring you some great news. I say, you know what, guys? We have an agreement between age, between uh, Fury and White. And let, you know, let's, get it, let's get it cracking, basically. So Friday, 9pm, off the cameras boxing. Okay, we're going live. But on the on the um, on the AJ scenario, for me, if I was advising him, I'd just say to him, "Look, first and foremost, what do you want to do?" Okay. If he says, "No, nah, I'm a throwback fighter. I want to take the fight." All right, cool, no problem. Let me ask. Let me speak to your training team, your new training team, and your mental coach. Okay. And I'll ask them simply, "Do you think?" AJ will be ready mentally and physically within three to four months, maybe even five months, to fight Alexander Usyk. Yeah, and I'll show them tapes of Alexander Usyk doing things like chess and all of these things, and and have them cross examine uh, Alexander Usyk and cross examine AJ. And I say, you know what? Do you think this guy will be mentally and physically ready to fight this gentleman in Alexander Usyk? Okay, this um, you know, Anthony Joshua, who's former. Unified heavyweight champion of the world, former two time heavyweight champion of the world. Do you think he'll be ready? If they turn to me and they say, Nah, we don't think he's going to be ready, I say, Look, AJ, mate, sorry, personally, should take the fight. If, it, if they turn around and say, You know what, we could get it all wrapped up, I'm not gonna lie, in the next two months, mentally and physically, so within well, within five months, we, we, you know, we'll be more than ready for that fight. I'll say no step aside. No step aside, we're gonna break his jaw, bro. Yeah. But if it, I don't want to say turn around and say, yeah man, AJ should 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 um, take the fight if, if behind closed doors he's not confident in taking that fight. That's that that's in my opinion. If if you're going into a room and AJ is not confident in taking that fight, I don't want to turn around and say, yeah, but, but you, you said you're pro fight and all of that malarkey. No, man. If you're not confident, don't take the fight. If you're confident, and your, and your team are confident, have confidence in you, take the fight, okay? Um, but you got the problem with the Fury and, and White Camp. Fury recently, to be fair, every other hour, every other day is releasing like videos and his phone saying, chop, chop, TikTok, hurry up, 
Retete. Big man, I'm gonna be honest with you, yeah. The reason why we're all in this problem is because of the Tyson Fury. I'm like majority of the problem has been Tyson Fury. I'm not gonna put it all down to him because the WBC played a huge part in this being a huge issue at the moment. But how we got to this scenario is Tyson Fury. See, if Tyson Fury would have, would have fulfilled his his um, contractual ob obligation to fight Deontay Wilder last year, or even in the back end of 2020, because he signed that agreement, we would have been in this situation. Tyson Fury would have fought Deontay Wilder, probably beaten him up in a very similar fashion, and then it, it would have been plain sailing, and we would have fought. Um, he would have fought Anthony Joe for inside the rapier, no problems, okay? But because he had to fight Joe Wilder for the third time, the WBO said, nope, mandatory is here. And that's when Alexander Usyk burst onto the scene. Well, he was on the scene because he, 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 he um, just saw it, but you get my, you get the gist, okay? So I don't want to hear, I don't want to be hearing all of this hot chick, TikTok, hurry up, red tail tail, all this nonsense here. Bruv, I want to hear his absolute silence from Tyson Fury because you've caused this problem. You've caused this problem, yeah. And right now you're the most vocal in getting in ten everybody to hurry up when you're the one who caused it to begin with. Big man, allow it, bro. Yeah. Just take a seat and and keep your mouth shut, okay? Anyway, and do, do you know what? Yeah, like I I don't want to go all in on on certain fighters because they get in the ring, they hurt themselves, and for our entertainment. And I don't like going in on fighters, but I'm losing my patience with Tyson Fury, as you can probably tell at the moment. But that's regarding the heavyweight scene. So Friday we'll get some hopefully we get some good news. Um live Friday, 9 p.m. off the campus boxing. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna be doing a whole you know summary on what's gonna go on. If it gets pushed up even more, yeah. I might just run for like half an hour and then open up the phone line. So this stay tuned on Friday. We have some also new announcements. Florian Marco has signed a, a long-term agreement with Sky Sports and Boxer. Which is some great news, I think, for, for Florian Mark. But I, I remember I was at the Tottenham Park the Stadium for the AJ Usyk first fight. And he was on the undercard. He was, listen, you can see a lot of Albanian flags everywhere you go. And the support was immense. Like, the support was, I was just like, wow, blood. Like, you can hear them. They had their own stand. Like, it was mad. It was mad. It, it's like they all ordered tickets together. That's exactly how it felt like. It felt like all, all the tickets together. Um, well, he's finding a good with Boxer. Who do you guys want him to face next? Because I, I heard one person suggest Chris Congo. Chris Congo is a good shout for him, you know. Um, who else? Um, Josh Taylor. No, not just Taylor, sorry. Josh Kelly. Josh Kelly would be another good shout for Florian Marku as well. Um, you know, I don't think the likes of Avenician and Conor Ben should be fighting Florian. I think Fl Florian is that kind of step below these sort of guys but you know what I like Florian man he's a funny guy you know he's um he's a very um charming individual so big up Florian and I can't wait to see him in his next fight um, um on the last bit of news okay with regards to all of this malarkey we have a, a fight announcement for um for Estrada Chocotito that one has been has been um it's cancelled it's no longer happening so now we've got, I think it's Estrada versus, what's his name, Martinez, which is a cracking fight. I'm here for that fight as well, same day. So we'll be doing a whole watch along for that fight and, and um, fight preview and all that scenario, but I can't wait for that fight. To be fair, I'm just excited about that, that fight, the Chocolatito fight in particular. So let me know who you guys think is going to win. Um, so, to be fair, that, that is some great news. And on, to be fair, the last bit of news, okay? Have you, have you not seen Audley Harrison? Audley Harrison is on some next major smoke, you know, like Audley, yo, I, I, do you know what, I think, I think, you know, I don't know what, what Audley's going to do, I don't know whether he's, he's, he's looking to drop up some interest to be back into boxing as a manager or promoter, but big him up, man, big him up, if it wasn't for him, a lot of the scene would be as big as it is at the moment, because him and David Hay, really done a whole heap of um promotion for uk boxing what 10 15 years ago something along those lines so 
if it wasn't for him, the, the scene at the moment would be as big as it is at the moment. So big up uh, Audley Harrison. Um, I don't know what Carl Frost said to him that pissed him off, but it is what it is. Okay, so but that's it for today. Like the video, subscribe to Up the Canvas Boxing. See you guys on Friday. Peace, love, and prosperity. I'm gonna see you guys in a bit. Peace.